every day to discover each new day as it seems to unfold itself in different ways that God moves, you could say, people around or circumstances around to bring us to a place of appreciating just how intricate and detailed He is in caring for you and me in a personal and intimate way that nothing else could ever touch or become so involved in that they would know us better than we know ourselves. I mean, God literally does. Jesus himself saying that God looks on the outward things, but, or man looks on the outward things, but God looks on the heart and he's got every hair of your head counted. I mean, think about it. The person you love, maybe your wife or your children or, or spouse or somebody in your family, or even your mother may think that she knows every part of you or your father. But in reality, God, is so far beyond that, so more encompassing that, really, when you boil it down to amazing, that's who God our Father is, completely amazing, and he reveals himself in Jesus, so we see in Jesus the Father, but there is more, and knowing the Father is, is such a honor and a privilege, but also just a joy to discover that he cares even more intimately and deeply than Jesus does for you. And what an amazing grace that is to find. Christ, who is the image of God, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. God was manifest in the flesh, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And in so like-minded, you know, we become every day, as we turn our lives over to him and we recognize that he's already working in our life to accomplish that which is best for us as well as those around us and sometimes more so for others than for ourselves then it becomes obvious that we have a new nature we have something that's different than who we were before we were born again and as that continues on in the process of sanctification and salvation literally then we begin to look in the mirror and see that there's a stranger in front of us because that image we see in the mirror is just a rotting carcass of the person that we are inside. So don't be too attached to what you look like as much as what you're becoming. Thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. When I am weak, then I am strong. Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or whether with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let no man prevail against you. Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver by any by his great strength. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of wickedness and darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Often people presume to know what the battle is, when in reality we are called to cry out to God for his salvation because 
Psalms declares that salvation is of the Lord, not of ourselves. That though we've been given the ability to wear armor, though we've been given ability to know the Word of God, though we've been given many wonderful and marvelous gifts from the Holy Spirit, nowhere does it say, go forth and do battle for God. In reality, it says, stand and see the salvation I bring, because we've been called to do something else that we need not fight a warfare. What we need do is go towards those who are without salvation. And we need to present to them the clear, precise word of God that we can give to them the joy that we have found in Jesus as we walk daily with him, asking him to guide our way. Because you could spend the next 10 years, if we live that long, and if the Lord tarries, which I doubt, but you could spend the next 10 years doing warfare that you think that you're conquering and Satan's laughing at you because his time will not end until it's been proportioned to him by God. And when it is, at that time, then it says that God himself would laugh because those who put their trust in any other place except Jesus doing the work for us have found failure because Satan was not hindered at all. But we can, by way of being the light, cause wherever we are the joy, the peace, the love, the gospel itself to come to those who are in need and are desperately seeking and crying out for God to send a deliverer. And because Jesus is in us, we aren't going to deliver them in some deliverance ministry, but we are going to bring God to them so that he can deliver them out of all of their distress. In some way, sometime today, take a moment to pray and walk with your God in a humble, simple way.